What was the scariest thing that had ever happened to you posted one day ago? I've posted this story on Reddit before, but I got lost in some sand dunes once. I was probably 11 or 12 and forced to hike with two adults who have absolutely zero sense of direction. More than one time I just stopped to cry because I thought we were going to die and I'd never see my mom again. After five-ish hours climbing dune after dune, only to find more fucking sand on the other side, we finally found some trees that led to the road. I refused to speak to the two people I went with or the person that made me go with them for like three days after. That was a vacation to remember. When I was 14, I woke up for school and started eating cereal at the kitchen table, and all of a sudden, I wake up on the sofa in the living room. I wondered why I was in the living room and not at the kitchen table. I thought that maybe I had fallen asleep at the kitchen table and my dad had carried me to the living room sofa like parents do to little kids. All of a sudden, I see a bunch of people with a gurney coming towards me and I wonder WTF is going on. They tell me I had a seizure and they start taking me to the hospital. Now I start getting nervous about what the rest of my life is going to be like and if I'm going to be okay. My dog woke me up at 4am really quietly and I heard someone entering combos into the front door pad. He usually makes a lot of noise when someone's at the door so it seemed odd. Long story, but my phone line had been cut and my cell hadn't been charging all the time and was dead. I look through the blinds and it's a fucking triangle of a bodybuilder outside. When the guy realizes I'm moving around in there, he starts shouting that he's going to kill me and trying to break the door down. The entire time, my dog was basically just quiet, hiding behind my legs, until, in a futile effort, I tried shouting that I'd called the police and they'd be there any minute. When my dog heard the fear in my voice, something in him snapped. He's so passive, I like to call him Sleeping Beauty as he's literally befriended neighborhood birds, squirrels, and cats. But at that point, he started making a sound I've never heard before or since from any animal or horror movie and began bashing head first, trying to break the door down back at the guy trying to kill me. Weirdly enough, my dog managed to break through the window in the door before the guy could break down the door. He ran out after the guy and then came back a bloodied but mostly unharmed 15 to 20 minutes later. Time lost, meaning during that period. It turned out, an ex had convinced this ex-Navy guy to kill me. Obviously, my dog and I were a bit traumatized, but he got a lot of praise and was really proud of himself, though I think he had something like PTSD, as every night at about 4 a.m. for months after, he'd insist on patrolling the yard. Not a normal potty break, just walking the threshold quickly while looking around. He'd freak out and whine if I wouldn't wake up to let him out. TL, DR. Guy tried to break in and kill me while my phone lines were cut and my mobile was dead. Biting ensued. Woke up in the middle of the night to the sounds of my TV being stolen. Cords being ripped out of the wall, tons of banging. My five-year-old was sleeping in his room with the door closed and my door at the end of the apartment was open. I felt like I was going to die and I was paralyzed with fear. I slowly dialed 911 on my cell but was too scared to even press call because if they heard me, maybe they'd kill me and my son. After about 10 minutes of loud noise and what sounded like chaos, it finally stopped and was silent. I slowly got out of bed and peeked through the crack. I didn't see anything strange in the living room and meandered out. My TV and all belongings were there. Then, like a bat out of hell, my cat came out from behind the TV chasing a mouse. That motherfucker had been playing with this mouse the whole time behind the TV, crashing shit. Well, I thought I was going to die. I'll never forget that night. I have cerebral palsy, but I've always worked while at and after leaving college, sometimes having two or three jobs at a time. When this incident happened, I was 22, renting my bungalow and living alone. I was going to work. My main job at the time was as a dance, fitness, and play therapy assistant to a group of therapists working for young people with physical, learning disabilities, and extreme behavior disorders. As I'm a full-time wheelchair user, I had to use a cab to travel to and from work, and although most of the guys driving for the cab firm were solid and really nice, there were a few dodgy ones, as in most walks of life. I could transfer quite easily, so all the drivers had to do was hold my wheelchair steady, then fold it up, then put it in the boot. On this day, the guy turned up at 8.30 a.m., late, and proceeded to transfer. I felt him right up close behind me. His hand brushed lightly over my back and bottom. It's worth mentioning that I had slight issues with this man before, mostly making smutty remarks and asking me out for a drink. I said no. He got slightly nasty and ended up having to report it to the firm. As I'm disabled, there wasn't much I could do as I was holding myself up and I couldn't let go of the door. 
I swore at him, managing to swing round to sit in the car and told him never to do that. He just laughed and smirked. We started to drive. Ten minutes in, I noticed we weren't going the regular route to get to the center where I worked. Being angry with him anyway, also the fact that I was already late for work, I asked him about this. He ignored my questions and said in a cold voice, You know I live around here. I could take you to my flat where my three mates are and there wouldn't be anything you could do about it. When he said this, I was cripping myself inside, but I said in my bravest voice, If I'm much more later, work will call and they will have your firm details too. With that, he scowled at me big time and after a while, I soon recognized the usual route to work. When I arrived at work, my boss was worried. He saw the driver, who he didn't have time for either, and asked me if I was okay. After a while, I was able to tell my supervisor what had happened and she first called the cab firm and then the police, who came to interview me at work and then talked to the man. I don't know what happened to him, but I never saw him again. Long story, but I think it really fits. When I was nine, me and my sister were kidnapped by our father, though it didn't become overly scary until towards the end. My parents had split custody of us, and during our week with him, he said that we were going on vacation. He told us we couldn't tell anyone and helped us pack. I remember thinking it was odd, but he was being nice to me and my sister, and I didn't want that to change. He was normally an abusive asshole. We got on a plane to the Dominican Republic and stayed there for a few days, still weren't allowed to talk to anyone back home. A day before we were supposed to go back to my mother's house, we got our luggage and got on a boat. I remember switching boats a few times, and eventually we ended up being dropped off near a city. I found out later that we were now in the USA. I'm Canadian. My father had an apartment ready for us and brought us there. I remember being confused and not understanding why we were there and couldn't talk to anyone from back home, but I was too scared of making my father angry, causing him to become violent, to question him or do anything. For the first few days in the apartment, my father was really nice and paying attention to me and my sister. After that, he went back to his usual ignoring us unless it was to insult or beat us. Back home, I had always been given a lot of responsibilities for things that my father didn't want to do, such as getting me and my sister ready for school, get medication refilled, I have asthma, and sometimes get groceries. So when I noticed that my inhaler was running low, I grabbed my health card and went to find the local pharmacy to get it refilled. I ended up getting pretty lost and eventually ended up in a pretty rundown area, and a giant tattooed guy came up to me, helped me, and brought me to the pharmacy and waited while I talked to someone in there. I couldn't get my prescription filled. I didn't understand at the time that I could only go to the pharmacy that had the refills on file and started to get nervous. The pharmacist said that there was a problem and I needed to wait until someone else could arrive and the man offered to wait with me. A few minutes later, the police arrived and talked to me and I explained what I was doing. They asked me a lot of questions and must have realized that something was wrong with the situation. I started to get really scared at that point because I thought I had done something wrong and was being arrested. The police ended up convicting me to come with them and I ended up at the police station. At that point, I was pretty scared and exhausted. A nice officer brought me into a conference room and told me I could sleep in there. When I woke up, there was a social worker there and my sister was with a police officer in the next room. The social worker explained that my father had taken me and my sister on this trip without telling my mother and that my mother was very worried about me and my sister. I got to talk to my mom on the phone and she sounded more terrified. That's when I started to get really scared and realized that my father had done something very bad. I ended up having a panic attack, which triggered an asthma attack and was sent to a hospital. A couple days later, my mom arrived and she kept hugging me and talking and crying. I found out that my father had kidnapped me and my sister and that he hadn't planned on us ever seeing our mom again. When my dad was confronted by police, he spilled the whole thing. My sister had spent the few days in a foster home. We ended up going home with my mother, and when we got home, everyone seemed really glad to see us. My dad even got to keep partial custody of me and my sister. I found out later that it was because my mom didn't think she could afford the legal fees. At the time, it wasn't the scariest experience of my life, but looking back on it, it it's absolutely terrifying. I don't want to think about if something had gone differently. TL, DR. My dad kidnapped me and my sister and took us to a different country. The police found out by chance, was scary at the time, terrifying to look back on. I was snowboarding. I knew the particular area pretty well, so I knew when to pick up enough speed to last me on the long, almost flat transfers between the slopes. One of the first rules of skiing or snowboarding is to never 
undo circumstances stand somewhere oncoming people can't see you, i.g. behind sharp turns or under an overhang. I was going very fast entering the transfer. You had to take a sharp turn, and as soon as I cleared the turn, I see a guy with his toddler kid standing behind the curve, two meters in front of me. In order not to run over and possibly kill the child, I had to abandon the turning motion and go straight into an up a little wall of snow and ice that was meant as a sort of fence. It kicked me up about three meters into the air and to the right. In the air, I could see that behind the snow fence was a cliff of a couple hundred meters. That's when I thought, yeah, that's it. Luckily, I flew not straight but sideways. I landed on top of an oak fence next to the snow fence with my thigh. Broke through the three fence boards, my snowboard and lower legs were dangling over the abyss. I managed to claw myself away from it. I looked at the guy whose kid's life I just saved almost killing myself in the process because of his astronomically stupid. He picked up his kid and rode away. I was 15 at the time and someone had to call the mountain rescue because my leg was pretty messed up. I still hate that guy. I've mentioned this on here before. I was in a bad car accident with my kids, age one and four at the time, and the car rolled onto my side. When we stopped, I could hear my daughter crying, but could tell just from the sound it was her scared but not hurt cry, but I didn't hear the baby at all. And I remember having to take a minute to brace myself before I turned around because I was so afraid of what I'd see. So I turn around and he's not fucking there. And it took my brain a minute to process that. And then another for hearing to kick back in and realize my daughter was screaming, get him off of me. I look over and his car seat had come loose, slid across the car and landed on her seat. Both of them were perfectly fine. She was just pissed off he was on her. The fear I felt in those moments of not hearing him and then not seeing him was fucking awful. The other scariest thing was probably when I was babysitting at 14 and one of the kids had a psychotic break and attacked his sister and then cornered me and her in the living room with a kitchen knife, threatening to kill her. But I don't remember feeling fear at the time as much as this weird focus and adrenaline burst while I was dealing with it. Grew up on a farm. We raised rabbits for a few years when my brother and I were younger. I was in third grade when this story took place, so I was about eight or nine. We kept them in a barn at the edge of our property along the tree line. Our house was about three to four minutes walk away. When there were litters of young bunnies, I would go and collect them to bring inside and play with. I would scoop them into my shirt and hold the hem to make the bunny hammock to transport them to the house. One particular afternoon, as I was carrying my bundle of bunnies back to the house, I got this strange, I'm being watched feeling. I turned back to look at the barn and I saw a big black bear standing at the edge of the woods staring at me. I wasn't far from the house at this point, but I was close enough to the bear that it would easily be able to catch me especially with a t-shirt full of baby bunnies, before I could get to safety. Fortunately, the bear did not charge at me, and I remembered my dad's advice about never running away from bears if I saw one. Despite living in rural farmland, I still felt like quicksand was more of a top threat to my safety at the time. I slowly turned sideways so that it wasn't staring directly at it and giving off aggressive body language, and made it to the house where I then let our German shepherds outside. They didn't even notice the bear, but them running around and playing in the yard spooked it off anyway. I heard a loud bang when I was in the bathroom brushing my teeth, so I went downstairs to check it out. My husband had been running on the treadmill and passed out, hitting the wall behind him and leaving a huge hole. He must have been conscious enough to lay down next to the wall, but he was barely breathing and his lips were turning blue. He was also unresponsive. I had no idea what to do and felt completely helpless. I hadn't taken CPR since high school 12 years prior. I had a thought that he could actually die. Luckily, he snapped out of it and we got him to the ER. That was a rough time. Turns out a combination of meds were giving him heart problems that caused him to pass out. He's better now. I was in a bad way, mentally, emotionally, the first year after college and I smoked some PCP-laced weed and freaked the fuck out. I didn't sleep for several days, I started weird Facebook fights and I scared a woman I'd latched onto as a friend enough that she called the cops on me to admit me into the emergency room in handcuffs. Still freaking out, I started freaking out even more as I was forcibly restrained and shot up with shit tons of antipsychotics. But the scariest part was still feeling paranoid and totally ungrounded while under 24-hour observation. Nothing like actually being watched all the time to make you even more paranoid. Bonus scary bit, facial dysplasia from the antipsychotic Hello, paradol. I couldn't control my face and involuntarily grimaced a lot. 
I could tell my siblings were visiting, but I just felt like a monster. I have been through multiple scary experiences, but the most terrifying was when I was a little kid and I had asthma. My dad was sleeping next to me in my bed because he did that sometimes. So when I was sleeping, I woke up in the middle of the night having an asthma attack. I couldn't breathe, speak, nor move. All I could do was gasp for air and flail around in bed. At that moment, I thought to myself, I'm going to die like this. I was terrified and panicking, but I was lucky because my dad woke up to me trying desperately to breathe and called my grandmother, a retired nurse, who was in the room across from us, and she saved me. I was still scared by what happened and so thankful that my father was in that room with me because if he wasn't, I could have died and my family would wake up to me dead. When I was 15, someone unknown had put a homemade explosive in our neighbor's mailbox and drove off. This was around 3 to 3.30 a.m. It went off, but only enough to wake everyone on our street and destroy the mailbox it was planted in. A college student directly across the mailbox who lived with his family was awake and gaming and said he saw the guy drove up in an unlicensed vehicle, walk around for a while before putting it in the mailbox and sped off shortly before it blew up. When the police investigated the following morning, they said the bomb actually malfunctioned and was supposed to do more damage than it did. Anyway, the concept of it still gives me the creeps. When I was four or five, my parents took me and my baby sister to a party at their friend's house. They had an above ground pool. I took a snorkel and being four or five, had no idea how it worked. I assumed it would just let me breathe underwater. So I strapped on the snorkel and jumped into the pool. Basically, a snorkel is a straw. I breathed in water and was going to drown. I honestly don't remember who saw me and pulled me out. Might have been my dad. For those few seconds, I was terrified I was going to die. I was working as a cook in a restaurant. It was about 12.30 a.m. and me and one other cook were cleaning the grill area. The cooking areas were all along the back wall of the kitchen. The dishwasher area was along the front wall of the kitchen. Between was the pickup area with heat lamps where the servers came to drop off order slips and pick up food. To the right of the dishwasher were two doors, one to come in from the dining area and the other to go out to the dining area. We're getting close to being done. The kitchen had been closed for half an hour or so, but the bar area was still open and they had a piano player singing, etc. The bar did some good business late nights. I'm taking some stuff to the sinks to clean them and I hear two loud bangs from the dining room. It sounded like someone hit the wall with an axe twice. While that's going on, maybe eight people come into the kitchen from the dining room and head toward the back door. It sounded like they were laughing, so I wondered if they were playing a joke on someone. They go out the door and I start to follow. The door is offset far to the left of the sinks, so it's maybe 15 to 20 feet from the doors coming in from the dining room and not in line with the dining room doors, unlike the grill area, which is in direct line to the doors. Just as I get my hand on the door to the back, I hear one of the doors from the dining room slam open and I see a barrel of a shotgun come through. Boom! That's a gun, I think, and I'm out the back door like a jackrabbit. Turned out, one of the waitresses had an ex-boyfriend who had been in jail. She broke up with him when he went in. Well, he got out, and he didn't want to be broke up, so he and a buddy went to visit her at work. When she told him they were still over, he was unhappy. He went out the car and came back with the shotgun. He was lucky he didn't kill someone. The shot into the kitchen was right at the other cook, who was standing there looking to see what's happening. Luckily, he was using bird shot, and most of the pellets hit one of the heat lamps. These things had a lot of insulation on each side. The pellets went through one side of the lamp, but didn't go through the other. The cook was hit by a couple of stray pellets, but if the shot had been a few inches lower, it would have all passed below the heat lamp and hit him dead in the chest. But seeing the barrel of the gun, then hearing the shotgun blast was the scariest thing I've ever had happen to me.